Hi, Stamper fans. How is everybody tonight? Um, we'll wait a wait a second here for a few people to to uh, log on. I know my usuals usually usually my usuals will show up. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to another Make It Monday. I am Nan Gerlitz, independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Bloomington, Illinois, and I am here live on my Facebook page every Monday night at 7 p.m. Central Time in the U.S. Um, I don't think there's a Central Time elsewhere. I think all around the world is different time zones, right? I don't know. <laughs> but I always like to let you know I'm in the U.S., right? So um tonight we have some fun personality fun stamp set so um that'll be uh cool and i've got a few other things to show you as well that kind of um uh continue on last week's um theme so if you are here live please drop a comment if you're watching the replay i would also love a comment letting me know that you're watching the replay and maybe where you're watching from. Um, I always like to see who stops in and I do see the comments even afterwards. So if you have a question, always a good idea to um, drop it in the comments. Hello, Lucia. Yes, noon in Melbourne. So nice. <laughs> um, yeah, and I didn't get a chance to watch your live today so i'll have to catch up on that as well i always catch your monday replay because i am not up in the middle of the night so <laughs> all righty um, let's go ahead and change the camera view here so this is the card i'll be showing you tonight the winner from friday night stamping um i absolutely love this stamp set it's full of puns i love puns they're so funny um so yeah, I'm all about humor and fun personality. So, and I added a little extra personality to these guys. So I'll show you that tonight. I also wanted to um, show the Stamper Man's card because quite frankly, I don't think it photographed super well. So first of all, you got all these cool um, like stitched lines down here in the die cuts and then all of that embossing from the uh, it's Mary Melody, I think, the embossing folder, like so cool. So I wanted to show that. Um, I love a nice kind of white on white with just one color like that card. Um, I don't do it very often, and maybe because it doesn't photograph. <laughs> Sometimes Friday night stamping can be lim limiting. So, all right, so we're going to do this card. Um, you know, let's do that first, and then I will show you some more creations I made with those um, Memories and More cards. I will show you that after we're done. So stick around to the end of the video to see that funness. Funness? <laughs> As always, I have linked a uh, full supply list and cardstock measurements in the video description. So you can see all of that by clicking that link. The extra cool thing about that link is that if you want to purchase any of those things from my online store, you can just click add to cart. You can pick and choose which ones you're adding and super, super simple way to do that. So bonus for that. Um, yes. Okay. So. <laughs> You guys, it's Monday again, right? <laughs> um, I will say I didn't sleep very well last night. So uh, I I, start, I take collagen or glucosamine, whatever, and we got some other brand and I didn't think it was working. So I stopped taking it a few days ago while I waited for my other one to come in and doggone if my joints and everything didn't hurt last night. So I ended up taking the other stuff again until my new uh, one comes in. So any old people like me want to share their pain? <laughs> so, uh, but yes, this is the Taco Fiesta set. I absolutely love it. Like your nacho average friend. Come on, long time no taco. It's just great. Hello, hello, Penny. We're just getting started. You missed, you know, a couple of corny jokes. So Nothing earth shattering. <laughs> um, okay, and then it's a pretty simple, oh my gosh, you guys, you know what I forgot? I forgot my embossing folder and my little machine. So hold on a moment while I grab those.
I should have just pre-done this and then, you know, no big deal. I totally forgot. I did add it to the supply list, so they're on there. Okay. So this card is a pretty basic layout. Um, I have used thick white for the um, um, base. Same measurements as always, your standard A2 card base in the US. Um, and then we've got Lemon Lime Twist, which is a super fun color. And a little strip of basic white as well. If you wanted to, um, you know, if you're just getting started, you're just building supplies. If you wanted to use the thick basic white as well for your layer, you absolutely can do that. I do recommend you use it for your base because your card is going to stand up better and not flop around and, you know, fall down when people are trying to display its beauty. <laughs> and then we've got a couple of thin strips of Poppy Parade, just as a little accent color. And I realized afterwards, it, it kind of looks almost like the Mexican flag when I was done. So like bonus oopsie kind of thing I did. <laughs> All right, so right off the bat, I got a cool tip for you um, that I did not do originally Friday night. So this is kind of a bonus. But, all right, now I have to, I keep losing my little um, clear sheets, my little clear sheets that I um, put over the top of my stamps. So I have to try to keep track of that tonight. Subliminal, <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do, since these are all stamped in Memento Tuxedo Black ink to start with, right? Um, I'm just going to line them up on the little strip here. La -da -da. I love that the cactus had arms built in. It's awesome. Um, there's the avocado. And of course, being the picky eater that I am, most of these things I won't even eat. It's hilarious. <laughs> so there's that. All right, let's move these guys down just a little bit. So we have room for our sentiment. Where is it? Spectacular. Hilarious. I do love a pun. And like the, the groanier, the better, right? It's just like, like dad jokes, really. They should be mom jokes. I know plenty of moms that tell these terrible jokes, so. Hello, Joan. Nice of you to join us. So happy you're here. So I have um, substituted the big block I for this one. And since these are all getting stamped in the same ink, I am just going to pop this down, pick them all up together. So I placed them on the cardstock how I wanted them. And now I'll pick them all up. And I can take my ink pad. And I'm just going to take my ink pad to these and ink them up. which is nice too, because then you can really get a good view of, oh, I need a little more ink there or there, or whatever. Now, when I picked these up, I lined up the bottom of the block with the bottom of the cardstock, because I'm kind of smart like that sometimes. Now I can just stamp them all in one go. Voila, that's gorgeous. <laughs> that turned out really nicely. Um, just really even and everything. So I stamped these individually Friday night because I was deciding as I went which ones I was going to stamp. I knew I wanted that avocado and I knew I wanted the cactus. So we just had to go from there. But yes, once I was planning for my uh, my video, I thought, well, I might as well just stamp those all at once. So a little extra tip, and I don't need to do anything with that until we're done. So you don't have to watch me clean up. Okay. Another tip for you is when you're trying to decide colors of blends to use, so I'm using a lot of blends to color tonight, is it's best to get a piece of the same cardstock you're gonna be coloring on. So this is our basic white, just regular uh, weight. And, you know, color all over and just kind of decide which 
which colors are going to look best. So uh, we were talking about what color the burrito should be, the tortilla, and um, I was going between the um, the neutrals, and then Russ suggested the crumb cake, but the crumb cake just didn't, that was not what was in my mind. So I went with the neutrals. So we're going to start, let's start with our little pepper over here. We're going to, got some poppy parade. And I'm going to start with my dark and just go into kind of the details and down one side here. Oh, I did forget to stamp their little faces, though. Oops. We definitely need to do that. And let's do that before we color. Silly me. So I may have been able to do that while I was stamping everything else. But I'm not sure. Which guy's winking? This guy. Of course, the pepper's winking. Saucy. <laughs> so I'm going to use this big darn block because I didn't bring another one over. And I've already left you once tonight. So the trick is if you're using a big block like this for something this tiny, is a very light touch, both when you go to ink it up and when you go to stamp it on your cardstock. These are very tiny stamps with very thin lines. And you'll notice I am also putting them on the very corner of this block. So I have a little more control. Like if I were going to put it in the middle, that would be quite something. <laughs> Oh, the avocado's got his eyes closed this time, which is fine. Sorry about that, guys. So Saturday night, this will give me a little story time. <laughs> Saturday night, we went out to dinner, which we pretty much always do on Saturdays. And, um, yeah, I'm on fire tonight is right. Um, we always go out for dinner on Saturday nights, and we got a late reservation at our favorite little Italian place. And so we went out to karaoke afterwards because we were already kind of out later than usual. So, And we haven't been to karaoke in, gosh, I think it's been a couple of months. Um, I don't know that we went in December. We did try to go a couple of weeks ago, but... And they were closed, so obviously they weren't having it yet. <laughs> Oops. Where's my... There's my regulars. Nope, that's... Oh, that was my... Okay, so the burrito is going to be linking this time. So you have so many faces to choose from in here. So, yeah, so we went out to karaoke, and um, we were staying out for a little while. See, I will tell you, I smooshed that guy because of that big block. So always use a small block when you can. I just didn't want to leave you again. <laughs> um, but yeah, we were staying out for a while because I wanted to see if our son would join us and he um, works until close at his restaurant. So, uh, so we were out way past bedtime. <laughs> and I sang a few songs and um, it was really fun. It was a very good party atmosphere. A lot of college kids out because we live in a college town. And um, so after I was done singing my third song, I think, this college kid at the table next to us when I was coming back to our table just leaned out and went, will you marry me? <laughs> I had to tell him that I didn't think my husband would like that idea very much. So. <laughs> but that's a nice little ego boost, right? You know, I really didn't think that would happen. It was super fun, though. And I forgot to stamp my sombrero. Guys, I'm just, I am not on it tonight. I forgot to make a note of all my little steps. Sometimes I make a note of my steps. And then I tend to not forget things. But that's okay. So my sombrero, sombrero? Ooh. My sombrero was getting stamped on extra cardstock anyway because I'm cutting that one out.
And we're going to stamp that again because that was bad. <laughs> Which is why you always want to use the correct size block for your stamp. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, seriously. This is why you use the right block for your stamp. All right, third time's a charm. Oh, that's why, because I'm not inking that side. Okay. Voila! Yay! Give me enough tries, I can do it. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm riding that karaoke high. Oh, boy. It was pretty funny. And actually, Coop almost came out, but he was with friends at a different place, and they were playing darts. And by the time he got done playing darts, he said it was like 1 a.m., and that's when karaoke's done. So, <laughs> Yes, you have to have notes, right? Uh, I do have notes, but I didn't have my, um, my steps written out, so... All right, so we were talking karaoke. So I want to know if any of you have um, uh, talents that maybe people don't know about. Obviously, I sing and I stamp. So maybe are you an awesome cook? Do you bake really well? Do you crochet or knit? Or Penny, I know, does some uh, wicked gardening. She's got, man, she is crazy good. So anybody have anything else that they love to do? All right, so I am using, so when I first got my neutrals blends is when they first came out and they were all numbered like SU 700 and 900 and whatnot, right? It was like 100 through 1,000, I think. Um, and then they have since renamed them um, like light and medium and light medium and whatnot. Oh my gosh. You used to sew wedding dresses? That is a major talent, my friend. Pretty awesome. I'm very impressed. Ah, yes. Cooking and baking, for sure. I, I will say, <laughs> Penny's feet is full of food. <laughs> Canning the produce. All right. Okay. And Tyrion Lannister has uh, popped into the feed. <laughs> the Stamper Man, everybody. <laughs> it's hilarious at our house. <laughs> okay, so I have to remember which one of these is the darker one. I think it's that one. Because the caps look, nope, it's this one. The caps look very, very similar. Um, okay, so what we did here with the burrito at Russ's. Um, I, uh, suggestion was I kind of made some just dots, I guess, of the darker color. So this is, I think, the medium, one of the mediums. And then I took the lighter one, which is the light medium, and I just went all over and I kind of blended those dots in. And what he's saying, because the Stamper Man makes his own tortillas. And so then he, you know, grills them. And so you have those little marks from grilling them and from the masa and whatnot. So I did ask him Friday which color I should use for the tortilla. And he asked me, um, well, is it a flour or a corn tortilla? <laughs> Don't get smart with me. <laughs> Just need an answer. <laughs> Yes, those dots are how you know the tortilla has been cooked. So only authentic tortillas in our house. All right. And then, oh, not yet. Okay, so lemon lime twist. Let's add some of that. So I'm going to take the dark one. We'll go around the inside of the avocado here. And we'll go around Senior Cactus because he's got that mustache, so I feel like we have to call him Senor. <laughs> and then we'll take the light, and we'll just do a little blending. Don't worry about leaving some white, like around the edges. It's very artsy-fartsy. Makes people think you know what you're doing. 
I will say I follow this one woman on Instagram. Um, she is amazing. And um, she's a watercolor artist and she makes me want to paint, like not paint by number, but just blank piece of paper paint. <laughs> And one of these days, I'm going to have some time to actually try it because I am just fascinated. And she makes it look so easy. Oops. We got our little pepper stem, too. All right. Uh, we need to outline our avocado. And I chose mossy meadow for this. So we're going to go light mossy meadow. I did consult with my, my food guy on this as well. And he was saying it was probably a little darker green and the pit could grow either green or brown. And so I just went with the mossy meadow all the way around. You will notice there's a little difference. Friday night I used the dark mossy meadow. Tonight I used the light mossy meadow. So we're just switching things up a little bit. Okay. Now comes the cool part. Let's give them legs and arms. <laughs> oh, Julie's here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a real artiste. <laughs> My sister-in-law does amazing paintings. So as you can tell from her little profile picture. Um, yeah, she is an artist for sure. And yes, I do think of you every time I watch this woman, I'm like, I should just do it. But... I just don't have time to sit down and do it yet, so I will get there. Um, so I used the basic black stamp and write marker on Friday night, and this is the old tip. This is one of the older ones. There we go. And this is one of the new markers, and here is the new bullet tip. So this is the lemon lime twist. I'm going to give them lemon lime twist legs tonight, just so you can see what the difference would be. And literally, I am just drawing lines here, people. Little dots at the end for hands and feet. It's not rocket science, right? Let's give this guy some bow legs. <laughs> Avocado had some bent knees. It's very cartoony, which I think fits the set really well. Uh, we'll do some curved arms on the pepper this time. And I opted to have his leg be behind his little pepper tail. <laughs> if you were doing black, you could draw it in front, I'm sure. And in fact, what I might do is give them a little... You could probably do this with the brush tip as well like I'm doing right now, I'm just kind of laying it down to give them hands and feet. Um, but I feel a little more control with that bullet tip. So I just wanted to show you the difference because the black marker also comes with that new tip. So you'd get a thicker line. <laughs> right? Their little arms and legs are so freaking cute. And that was my whole thought Friday night. I'm like, I want to give them arms and legs. So. <laughs> All right. Now they need to be standing on something. That's something else I've learned from, you know, the artists that I watch online. So you got to give them like some ground, right? Table, whatever this is. So I'm just doing a squiggle line. And then I'm taking the color lifter, which is basically a clear alcohol marker. And I'm just going to go over this. And it is going to kind of blur that a bit and lighten it a bit. So it's not so um, jagged. Sure. <laughs> not the word I was going for, but it works. And when you first use the color lifter, you're like, that's not doing anything. It's, you know, it just doesn't look like anything. But as it dries, as the alcohol evaporates, you can see it's already kind of blurring everything. And so it just gives them a little something to stand on without being in the way. All right, we need to fussy cut our uh, sombrero. One of Lucia's favorite things, fussy cutting. <laughs> 
I have grown to enjoy it, but I did not used to, that's for sure. Normally, I leave a little white border around my fussy cut images, but I wanted this guy to be wearing this hat, and I didn't want it to look like there was a funny white border between him and the hat. So I'm going right on the line. And just remember, the key to fussy cutting is leaving your scissors still and moving the cardstock. And try not to do this. Just do a smooth motion as you move the cardstock through your scissors. That is a, will give you a much better result. All right, we need to emboss our lemon lime twist layer with one of my favorite embossing folders. This is the, it's like a crosshatch pattern, and it's part of the Basics 3Ds. I um, <laughs> love fussy cutting. Um, so this embossing folder comes with two other embossing folders. Should have brought them both over with me. One of them is polka dots. Anybody in the comments help me with what the other one is? It's polka dots and this crosshatch. Oh, and like a floral kind of five-pointed flower or leaf. Yes, I think it's my favorite embossing folder too. And I think why is because it is so versatile. It'll just work for like any project, right? I got to get the light right. There we go. It's just such a, you know, a neutral kind of, it works great on guy cards. It works great on just about anything. You just want some texture. Yes. It's so, all oh, a starfish. It could be a starfish. Yeah. Starfish, flower, poinsettia, whatever it is. So it's cool. So yeah, you, you got a three pack of embossing folders that come together. They are awesome. All right. And a couple of weeks ago, I splurged and I got some big silicone mats so that I would always have one sitting here. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is just put adhesive down top and bottom of my white piece here. And then I will take my poppies, poppies, any Wizard of Oz fans? <laughs> She's gone off the rails now, people. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're just going to make these strips. So it looks as though I had a full piece of poppy um, cardstock behind there, but I did not. So you save on cardstock as well. Love that. And then we're just going to pop this down flat. Actually, let's let's adhere this embossed piece first. The other thing I love about our embossing folder as well, you know. Not just ours, I'm sure, but you can use either the debossed or indented side or the embossed or popped up side. So depending on the embossing folder, sometimes that gives you a really different look. Some of them you probably really couldn't do that with, like the uh, the Merry Melody. I think things would be backwards. And, you know, to us musicians, that would make a difference. <laughs> So yes, everything is just adhered flat on this card. So super simple, except for our little sombrero. Ah, and I'm having trouble picking it up. So the little sombrero is actually going to get popped up on a dimensional. And I did pull out my mini dimensionals for this. No, I didn't. That's okay. I did Friday. I grabbed the wrong pack. But what I did was I took the edge pieces and I just cut a little guy for the back of the sombrero so it didn't peek out and then it would stick to the inside of my envelope. Nobody needs that. After you went through all this hard work, you want the people to be able to get it out of the envelope when they get it. And a jaunty little sombrero, and there we are. So a couple of small differences, super, super fun. I absolutely love this card. I was so excited about it. Russ and I were actually talking because he mentioned that um, I make more landscape cards and he makes portrait cards um, a lot. 
And I told him, I said, well, it's because I wanted to do this lineup of guys. And so I needed to go landscape if I was going to do a lineup of guys. <laughs> so that's always what determines which way I go with my cards is how is the image, you know, how is it going to fit, right? Okay. I'm going to clear some things away because I have exciting things to show you. So let me remind you. Last week, I was showing you these uh, Sweet Thoughts, Memories, and More products. So the card packs and then the cards and envelopes that coordinate with them. Thank you, guys. Um, so these are the two cards that I had showed, showed, shown <laughs> last week. I was an English major, can you tell? Um, so all like this was a die cut out of just regular cardstock and um, just added all the stickers and doodads. And I did add sequins to it. And then on camera last week, I put together this one that, again, just used the center of that die cut. But everything else came out of the um, cards and the stickers and whatnot. So i have made a few more and since we were together last week showing these i thought i would show you the other things that i made and i will be posting pictures of these too so first i actually recreated the samples from the catalog so here is one of our cards and so this is one of the three by four cards. This was a sticker. This is a sticker. This was a sticker that we just cut in half so that it made it longer. Boom, done. I mean, and I popped it up on dimensionals. That's the only thing that I added outside of those two um, items. So super fun, easy, just like the sample. And then this super fun guy is a box that was made out of one of the cards. Um, there you can actually see the score line on the back. And um, this was all fussy cut out of one of the, and I did, <laughs> I found the actual one that they used in the catalog after I had done all this fussy cutting. So I was like, well, this is the one that's going to get used. <laughs> so it's pretty close. But yeah, the little stickers behind. And then I did add this ribbon that I had in stock as well. I know the little box is so cool, right? Um, I'm actually going to be working on getting a template ready to share in my newsletter, hopefully this week. So um, it is actually pretty darn simple to do. I know, Lucia, I think you're going to need these. They're so cute. And just wait till you see my last thing. Um, so then we had some training in um, a Facebook group that is only for demonstrators. And I watched the video on that. And so I recreated Helen's cards that she made. Uh oh, my sticker stuck. There we go. So this is one of the three by four cards. This is another one that we just um, kind of cut and flagged it and then added stickers, boom, done. Like so simple. <laughs> yep, Joan, Lucia, you both need these sets. I'm, I'm actually loving these. And every time a catalog comes out with these cards and envelope sets, I'm like, I should get those. And I just never do. And I'm so glad I did this time. And then this is the other one that she put together. Again, this card is pre-printed. So I just put it on here and then added the fun foil butterfly sticker and boom, matching envelope ready to go to somebody special who will be super impressed with my five seconds of work. <laughs> so like, seriously, guys, these are just great. But here's the one that I'm so excited about. Um, and it was hard to get a good picture of this, but I think I managed. So this was um, a woman named Casey White had posted her version of it. And she said she had seen somebody else put together one of these. Um, and so I kind of, I kind of took inspiration from her middle piece, but I did a little differently. And then I remembered I had these shadow boxes. So you're going to get this terrible glare from my um, light. You can see. Oh, there. So if I turn it off, you can you can still see it. Wow! I know. I was so excited about this. So I did have the backing piece. Um, it was 
it was from another kit. So it's just a 12 by 12 piece. Um, and I had gotten, I had a couple of these shadow box frames. And so then what I did, I should grab this. This is actually the back like white piece to a designer paper set of papers. And what I did was I cut a half inch frame out of it. And I put that down on the scrapbook paper so that I would have that half inch edge all the way around because I wanted it to be exact. <laughs> and then I actually, for me, I did get a ruler out and I made sure that there was like a quarter inch between each of these. And some of them I did that. And some of them I just kind of lined them up. And, and as I added more, so I got all these pieces were just um, trimmed from mostly the three by four cards. So they all coordinate, which is another thing I love. So I just used the cards in the pack and I knew everything would go together. Um, this is a main card. And then this saying was on another card and I just cut it into strips to, um, to do that. Do what makes your soul happy. I love that. Um, the stickers. So yeah, once I got all of the um, big, well, actually the outside pieces, once I got all those figured out, I glued them down and then I started saying, okay, what can I fill in? So like I cut that little guy and that little strip was left over from this, I think. And I thought, well, that'll fit in there. This is a sticker, um, another sticker here. And some of these are popped up on dimensionals. You can see that they're kind of floating above and some of them are glued down flat. Um, we had these one card had like a rainbow of, the word love going down the card. So I trimmed those into um, little strips. And then this one, I added the foil heart for the O. So just a lot of little fun things. And then the only, so the only thing I added besides dimensionals is some more of those neutral sequins. That was it. I was so excited with how this turned out um, because I tend to do everything pretty, um, you know, regimented and whatnot. So to do things of all these different sizes, it was tricky. And I, but I will tell you, if you are like me and you don't, maybe collage is not your strength. I would start with this outside and definitely I loved having my little frame. So I knew everything was, you know, like I said, a half an inch from the edge. Um, start with your outside pieces put your big piece in the middle, your focal point, and then just fill in the gaps. It was actually really fun to do. Um, I started it on Saturday and I finished it yesterday. Thanks, Penny. I did stretch my comfort zone a bit, but oh my gosh, I just love it. And I've wanted to do these so much and I forgot I had these frames. So that's another thing is um, like, I, I got these, I think at Michael's, last year or the year before when they had a big sale. So they have every once in a while, they'll have a sale on their shadow boxes where you buy one, you get one half off or one free or whatever. So definitely watch for those sales. Um, that's a good, good deal for sure. Um, all right, let's pop up here. Hello there. Thank you all so much for joining me. And I'm glad you like that. I did get a pretty good picture of that uh, as well as the other cards. So I, like I said, I will be posting those both on, face, both on Facebook and Instagram. So if you wanna see some better shots of them, um, that'll be up this week. So you can see it. Uh, Lucia, you should really try it. Um, so it's funny, I was reading an article today read the whole thing too, not just part of it. Um, but I was reading an article on neuroplasticity, which I think I had mentioned, uh, I don't know, sometime this month. Um, and neuroplasticity is, you know, they used to think that your brain stopped growing. Like by the time you were an adult, your brain was done and that was that. But they have since learned, scientists have since learned that the more you do new things and experience new things, um, the more neuroplasticity you have and your brain cells, you know, um, will form new connections and neurons and all that synapses and all that stuff. Um, and so, and it helps stave off a lot of the, um, you know, like dementia and 
Parkinson's, they've said, you know, it, it can help that kind of stuff. So I'm very interested in that for sure. I think we all are. So doing something new like that helps those build those new synapses. So um, you just got to think about something a little differently. I will say I definitely recommend starting with uh, one of our designer series paper packs or like one of these card packs. The card packs are great because they have those sayings on them. And so you can make one of those your focal point like I did. Um, but that way, you know, everything goes together and you can just start with the foundations and then start adding die cuts or stickers or um, stamps and that you've fussy cut, which you love to do. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes, definitely, definitely get the memories and more. I'll t it was because I have made some samplers before and I have not been as happy with them. Um, so this one was super easy because, you know, like I said, all the all the elements are there. You don't have to worry about stamping or die cutting or anything. I just used the stickers and and the and the cards and it was great. And I could have kept going. <laughs> so, um, yeah, some of the ones I've seen you know, they added even more layers and maybe ribbon and all that kind of stuff. And you certainly can do that. So if you like to embellish, this is a perfect project for it, especially in a shadow box frame where you don't have to worry about the dimension of it. So very fun. Ooh, a workshop, Penny. That would be super fun, wouldn't it? Like everybody just buy the card pack and then you build in the, the cost of the frame with it and you just go to town. And really you could just do like, here's some basic ideas, give them some measurements for the outside pieces. Everybody bring a trimmer and you go. Yeah, that's a great idea, Penny. Let's, let's figure that out. Cause I like that idea a lot. <laughs> All right. Well, we had some good talking tonight, people. Thank you so much. I love it. And I hope you learned something new. It sounds like you did. And I definitely want you to go try it, whatever it was. Add legs to your stamps if that's all you do. Um, but yeah, definitely give it a try and let me know how it goes. If you learned something new, please share the video so that your friends and family can learn something new as well. And until next week, I'm still Nan Gerlitz. Happy stamping.